Good day, Forex Trader, and welcome to the first webinar of February 2017. I have to admit that January was boring. I've been going through the Forex market day in and day out, and there just haven't been good trades that have been lining up. In fact, there have been low probability to medium probability, and I've saved us from taking a lot of losses. Um, and, and I've been trying to keep our losses as small as possible so that when the market rectifies, then we'll be able to get our profits and our portfolio back to what they were. But you know, there's a lot going on, uh, especially in January with the inauguration of um, the Trump's presidency and also with Brexit, the uh, plans that are going to be going ahead, which is having an effect on the Forex market. I can feel it. It's been a decade and now all of a sudden I've got this feeling that this is a little bit uncomfortable. The market will rectify itself. You don't have to worry about that. When? I would say maybe February, March, okay, but I'm definitely going to be sending trades and, uh, but you need to keep your losses small. And what I mean by that is instead of risking 2%, drop it down to 1% uh, or even 1.5 if that's okay. It needs to be easy to trade the markets, all right, in terms of the emotional impact. Um, and that's how it should be. I mean, I've been doing this for many years where I dropped my percentage from 2% down to 1.5 or 1% when the market is just not feeling as good as what it normally does, I, metaphorically speaking, of course. But now, just so you know, um, I don't know if you know what's going on, but with this Trump's presidency, he's done a lot in 13 days that could have an effect on the Forex market. And because I've got this new software that I can talk as long as I want, really, uh, this could be almost like a podcast. I want to talk about the 13 days that Trump has been president. Don't worry, it's not going to be long. Uh, I'm going to try and make it as short as possible. And then we can go through the watch list to see what's lining up, what ha what's been happening in the markets, um, and how it looks. Okay? So this is called on the 13th day of Trump's presidency. Day one, President Trump became the 45th president of the United States of America, and he promised to make America... Uh, great again, right? His slogan, make America great again. Then he's got another slogan for 2020, which is keep America great. That's like going to a job interview and discussing what your salary will be in four years time. Anyway, day two, there are massive protests that went around in Washington DC and cities all around the world. So Trump has done it. He's been able to bring the world together and it was as part of the Women's March. Day three, Trump claimed that 31 million people watched his inauguration speech. Press Secretary Sean Michael Spicer, uh, he first said that no one had numbers. Shortly after he said that, he said it was the largest audience ever to witness an inauguration period. Okay, just to make matters worse, then we had uh, to defend the statement, Kellyanne Conway said that the Press Secretary gave alternative facts. That's like saying, no, I didn't lie, I just said something that isn't true. Okay, day four, boom. Mike Pompeo was sworn in as director of the CIA and Trump signs executive orders withdrawing the US from the TPP, the, uh, the uh, tr Trans-Pacific Partnership. Day five, he claims that uh, millions of illegal immigrants cast fraudulent votes during the election. So even after he becomes president, he still fights this battle. Anyway, day six, he signs an executive order to authorize the construction of the Mexican border wall. So he is doing what he said he was going to do. Okay, when they put it into action, that's when we'll see because who's going to fund the, the border uh, wall? No one but the Mexicans themselves. And that happened in day seven when he, he claimed a 20% tax on imports will be a way to fund the Mexico wall. Okay, uh, day eight, he signs executive orders to suspend refugee arrivals and impose extreme vetting on arrivals from seven Muslim countries. Day nine, he has one hour phone call with Russian President Vladimir Putin on the Islamic State and other topics in, in Syria. Day 10, people all around the world are still so confused as to how is this travel ban going to work and who's gonna be affected exactly. Day 11, finally Trump did what he does best. He starts to fire people. So he fired Acting Attorney General Sally Yates after she defied him over the travel ban. Then he fires Acting Director of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Daniel Ragsdale. No reason was given. Day 12, he nominates Neil Gorsuch for U.S. Supreme Court. And Day 13, Rex Tillerson was confirmed as U.S. Secretary of State. So 
Um, the funny thing is we don't need to watch satire or Monty Python ever again. The presidency that is going on right now, we are living in satire. It is so difficult, but it's, it's very entertaining, but also very frightening as to what could be going on and how it will affect the people of America and also the world going forward. Right, back to Forex. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you just a few things with the Forex market. The US dollar has been coming down on a gradual slope. Nothing really happening here. There was a beautiful cup and handle that formed and I'm sure you're saying why didn't Timon send out that trade? And the reason because it was two o'clock in the morning. So I'm sure you were looking at your eyelids at the time. Nothing going on there. The, the Euro USD again is going on this up uh, sideways movement where nothing really is lining up but also I'm very scared of the Euro USD. I haven't had good success in it and so I'm, I only look for the highest probability trades. For example, we had a sideways movement. We then had these high candles which made it form like a cup and handle but the problem is that these two candles is not good enough to form the cup. It's not a healthy cup. Even though the market went up quite a bit, uh, it, it probably wouldn't have been the high probability trade that we send out. GBP USD, um, let's take a look and see if we can get it. Right, uh, it's been on this down way trend and there hasn't been any formations forming. So what we can notice is that the general trends in the markets are not breakout patterns, but they are rather trending patterns. Okay, we've got another one here with the USD JPY. This was at five o'clock in the morning, far too early. Nothing lining up. Okay, then we got the USD CAD, uh, which is the United States dollar versus the Canadian dollar, which has been going sideways and then it's been going up a bit, but there hasn't been a strong breakout as per se. There was this W formation, but again, it's at five o'clock. And at four o'clock, I am out of the office and then I go look at the markets um, because I've, I've got other you know, obligations and I'm doing a lot of analysis back at home as well. And maybe I will consider sending trades at five, six o'clock this year, um, but it depends on how high the probability is for those trades. Okay, JBP, JPY. Again, nothing going on here. And if you do see something, please send me a message on the investorsclub.ca.ca today and we'll definitely, definitely, well, I'll take a look at it and see if it's worth getting into. Another cup and handle formed and then it broke out. But the thing is, it was six in the morning, far too early for, um, for getting in. And then once, uh, you know, I like getting into as soon as it breaks out and if it does the sideways movement, then I'm not really confident getting into the trade even though it's going up. It could have very easily gone down. Reason is the more sideways candles it goes, the higher the probability is going to break to the downside, right? Euro JPY, again, this downside movement, there is not much optimism and positivity going on with that market. I haven't written down anything yet for trades that are lining up, but I can tell you that they will line up eventually. Um, there are there's still billions of dollars going into the market. There's just rectifying with uh, what's going on with politics and with the world. EuroCAD, look at that, another one. The euro is on its way down. So the euro is going down because of the um, uh, because of the Brexit plans ahead, and the US dollar is going down because of the confusion with. Um, the presidency. Okay, AUD JPY. Now I understand if you didn't have the uh, this financial instrument in your arsenal, you know, in the trading platform, because not many do. In this case, this is Oanda, Oanda.com. They have it, and I see you can see it touched the stop loss and then it went to the take profit. Uh, it was based on this tiny little W formation, which is the only thing that was lining up. And I haven't sent a trade in a week and a bit, and I was thinking, oh, let me just extend this out it's a very small loss that we can make only 20 percent of the margin that you put in and also drop your percentage down to one two percent until i tell you well one to 1.5 percent until i tell you that the markets are looking good and you'll see that through the results for example if we look at the portfolio from last year we have strong gains okay we had the the five per rule 
which is uh, which did that but we ended up with fantastic profit so yes we've started the quarter on a, a down down uh, uh, time but we don't know when it's going to turn up all i know is that you must keep your losses small and we'll write our profits and we'll overcome any of those losses part of trading is losing and part of trading is also winning and also being patient for the trades that are lining up so as you know i'm not going anywhere uh, i'm here for another fantastic year to trade forex um, and also red hot storm trader with the cfds it's still a huge passion it will never end and um, i'm not going to say i've been through this before with the trump's presidency but i have seen the market do this in terms of the lack of interest in terms of how it's moving um, and this was with a couple of things for example when we had the dubai crisis uh, when we had the financial crisis there was a lot of confusion going on uh, when we had the um, oh, i'm just trying to think there were flash crashes which caused the entire forex market to be a little bit jittery with how it worked so i mean there's been many many different occasions now let's take a look at what's doing well and that is our usd czar take a look our rand is at 30 rand 44 to the dollar so it is really it is really doing well compared to where it was last last year if i go weekly you can see that last year in january it was at 17 rand 31 and now what we can see is that it's forming a dare i say a wedge pattern okay and why I say dare is because if it breaks to the upside, we could be going back to our levels at 1677. But the only thing is that it is reaching the apex. And the closer it goes to the apex, the less significant the breakout will be, which means it could fizzle out and continue going sideways until it decides where it wants to go. Hopefully, we have this huge inverse cup and handle which will break down and will take the rand all the way down to 11 rand okay 11 rand and then possibly and geez how is this nine rand that could be possible uh, if it follows this formation okay but until then i'm going to keep my eyes very carefully next week uh, because I'm, I'm looking at 50 minute charts now uh, because i'm going to be looking at um, uh, short trades that we can get into we need to drop our time frame we need to drop our uh, percentage of our, our our losses not losers losers i can't control because losers is, um it, there's a probability of winning 62.5 percent over the trades the entire year i'm still expecting that all right uh, last year was uh, a little bit higher um that was when i took over the forex service and uh, so it was fortunate I actually did expect more losers, but we had a fantastic run at the end of the quarter. And now I'm, a, I'm going to expect a fantastic run from, let's say, mm, near the end of February, March, April. I think that's when things will turn up. But uh, let's see, maybe things will turn up even better before that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this podcast, which uh, generally is like a webinar, but today was a little bit longer. I have been so enthusiastic with everything that's going on all right other than <laughs> the the actual watch list and i hope you you can feel this ex, um, excitement and and you can feel the excitement for 2017 to trade don't worry about the losers and um, just keep your eye on the prize and the prize is how have you done 100 trades later not how have you done after two three trades that is my final thought of the day because we got to base our our decisions on well our analysis and our reporting statistics on how we do quarterly but more importantly how we do yearly as long as our portfolio is higher than what it was at the end of the year we are winning so let's do it 2017 and uh, i will see you in the next webinar